Do you identify with all the, I mean, the Roberta and then Reverend's case, both of them? I, I know you're also a, a bond holder. It's, it's quite appalling and sad as, at the same time, given that the government um, plan with the IMF was indeed to put, have a, a very, um, you know, robust social protection with regards to this negotiation. Um, if you may know, the history is very clear. Most people investment, I wasn't part of it, most people investment was in this savings and loans and, and, and this microfinance and some other banking investment as well. And then with that particular crisis, people moved a lot of their investment because there weren't other uh, investment option for many people. And then we all felt, you know, government bond was one of the safest. Indeed, it was the safest investment that we had in Ghana. So similar to others, I also bought mine in 2021 um, with the hope that, you know, I had, you know, work very hard to make some money to be able to use that for my children's school fees at, as well. Uh, and indeed, because of that, I had to purchase the 10 year bond, which was expected to, um, I did it in the secondary market anyway, but it was expected to uh, be matured, I think in 2032, um, because I felt it was a long term. Now school school has reopened, just reopened. And you, you can imagine the messages from the schools on WhatsApp and others trying to tell you about the school fees. Um, with this news, and, and the sad situation is that the information about the decision to include individual bondholders was kind of slotting during the Christmas. So many people didn't really um, pay attention to that until probably 27th, 29th when people notice that with the exemption of the pensions, individual bondholders have been included. If you analyze that particular decision right now, the Im Im impact, I'm not sure whether the government has done the impact, which is which the same issue about the social protection, the impact of including individual bondholders on people's disposable income compared to even the pensions or even other, uh, uh, other maybe measures such as cutting uh, at this time, I would say unnecessary expenditures. Uh, to make sure it makes up for that. So for me, um, it's a situation, the communication is very bad. Um, I did it through Data Bank. Data Bank has organized some meeting with individual bondholders, but unfortunately, the information that came was one-sided. Even though they say, government says, Data Bank is just relaying that information. Government says that this is voluntary, but we ask them, what is the consequence of deciding not to take part of this? And they say government didn't give them any information with that. It is just now that I'm realizing that the government thinks that uh, even though it has waived its immunity, that it may not be able to pay even if you decide not to participate. And I think, as you've said, Argentina has experienced it. Sri Lanka has experienced it. Government has to be aware that other countries have seen suits similar to what in case they continue to include ours and we decide not to sign up, we may have to go with that suit. And if the government thinks that it's not going to work, I think you should look at other examples that have happened. We will definitely have to pursue that because the impact on our disposable income and our day-to-day -day life might be bigger, particularly for young people like, like us, uh, compared to even the pension funds that have been included. Exempted, sorry. I mean, 